You saw a number of people posting on social media in the couple of days leading up to Elimination Chamber that folks were legitimately excited for this event, especially in relation to what you might see out of some of these filler pay-per-views, premium live events, whatever they're called nowadays, whatever the hell. Um, it was palpable. You could feel it. You could sense it. And I certainly understand it. And there's a reason why. Because wrestling at its best is about characters, stories, moments, emotional investment. The business would be a whole lot better off now if it focused more on that and less on the Meltzer shit. And that's what it is, the Meltzer bullshit. The moves and the matches that people really don't give a fuck about except the hardest of hardcores and even then at some point in time, it's a diminishing return. That's why people were excited about this because they couldn't wait to see how this was gonna go down between Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns because they were invested in the characters. They're invested in the stories. They're looking forward to the moments. That's what wrestling is at its best. That's what it's all about. So, you know, even for me, somebody who's very, very like casually watching wrestling right now, not watching it a lot, not doing a lot of videos about it, I was going to make sure that I watched Elimination Chamber because I wanted to see how this was going to play out. And the first couple of matches for the show kind of stunk. Like the women's Elimination Chamber match, the whole time I'm just sitting there saying, can we just get to Asuka winning and get this the hell over with? Because I didn't look at any of these other nam damn ladies and think that they had any shot in the world that they were going to be the one to take on Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. Ain't no way. It was Asuka all the way. You know, like Nikki Cross, she's back to being psycho. Okay, still not relevant. Natalia's still around. She's there in Canada. Cool, who cares? Carmella's there. Okay, you really going to have her get a WrestleMania title match? Yikes. You know, Raquel Rodriguez, maybe they think that they've got something in her, but they only kind of teased it a little bit in this match. Like, it felt like their biggest thing was they were trying to put over Liv Morgan. Holy Christ. You're going to do a double submission pass out spot with Liv fucking Morgan? Give me a break. And even like the psychology of, you know, Carmella sitting there and breaking up one submission so she could pin somebody. Why wouldn't you wait? Like, it's every person against themselves. The name of the game is to get to the final two and win it. Why the fuck wouldn't you let it maybe help submit somebody? Then once you do that, then you turn on the other person, try to eliminate two people at once. Like, psychology and wrestling is basic fucking thing. It's so often missed now. But Asuka won, and that's all the crowd really cared about. That's all I really cared about. Next, Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. To me, I thought it was really weird that you're kind of having the, the payoff to the trilogy, and it's not at WrestleMania. And maybe there's a reason why, because they're going to do this again. Or maybe there's a reason why, because we didn't need to see it at WrestleMania. Because this was lame-ass, boring-ass, dumb-ass, repetitive bullshit. Oh my god! Brock goes crazy after the match! Mm, seen that shit over the past decade, haven't we? Mix it up a little. The best thing was, honestly, Brock using his foot to sit there and hit a half-ass low blow on Bobby Lashley to get DQ'd because he didn't want to lose. You know, there's a little something there, but this sucked. There's no other way to put it. It was a disappointment and you could feel it. Uh, but good thing is, is after this match, the show picked up. Edge and Beth Phoenix against the Judgment Day, I, that shit was good. That was solid. It felt like a pay-per-view match. You know, you watch Edge and you say, man, that dude's one of these underrated legend five-star talents that you just sometimes take for granted just how really damn good he is. And Beth Phoenix on, on her own right as a women's wrestler, really, really good, underrated. And, you know, the chemistry with them and Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley, like you've got the crowd. The one thing that was good about this crowd throughout the night in Montreal, and one of the great things about the Montreal crowd in general is they get really into the shows, you know, talk about fuck you, Dominic. All they were doing was explaining how Rhea was going to peg the shit out of Dominic after that match. Win or lose, didn't matter. You all know what's happening. Plus, he did some hard time in prison, so he's probably used to that treatment if you get my draft. 
Uh, but Edge and Beth Phoenix won. Move on from this Judgment Day crap, please. Find Edge a WrestleMania opponent that he can actually beat. Uh, but this match was good. And the last two matches just got even better from there. The Elimination Chamber for the U.S. Championship was phenomenal. One of the better Elimination Chamber matches that I've seen in quite some time. Everybody got a decent amount of shine, even though we could have done with just squashing Johnny Lane face early as fuck. Like, I can't imagine watching this match and seeing Seth Rollins, who I'm not a big fan of. But you look at Seth Rollins, and you say outside of the cringy WrestleMania goes to Hollywood crap with him and Becky, you say... Seth Rollins is a WWE superstar. He feels like it. He looks like it. He talks like it. He walks like it. He wrestles like it. He acts like it. Like he's one of those dudes for them. He really is. He's like a super light version of Edge. Emphasis on the super and the light. I can't imagine looking at Seth Rollins and then Johnny Gargano and thinking that there's any way in hell that those two would ever be close to the same fucking level. I also then can't imagine seeing Montez Ford in this match do some of the spectacular things he did. That spot off the frickin' top of the cage was phenomenal, and it actually looks somewhat legit. I can't imagine watching Montez Ford and say Johnny Gargano is at that level or ever could be at that level. He's in the wrong company. He needs to go to AEW. He has no personality. He has no charisma. He can just go do matches. And that's what hardcore fans like. And it's better suited for AEW any frickin' ways. He's out of place here. It was ridiculous. Um, the, the way this finished, though, even, you know, with Rollins and the curb stomp on Tez, on the frickin' outside on the chamber, leading to the door being opened. And here comes Lo Logan Paul hitting a buckshot lariat better than probably anybody actually in the frickin' business. Now you're off to the races. Austin Theory's got his fucking title. He retains it. We'll see if they do anything with him at Mania or not. Is it going to be Cena that he faces? We'll see. Um, but now you've set up Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. And I'm like, yeah, undercover. Like, when you look at this, this is a story that works. This is something that does well for Seth Rollins. This is something that does well for Logan Paul. And I would not be surprised at all if these two guys go out there at WrestleMania, night one or night two doesn't matter, and they end up being one of those matches that we remember years from now. They end up stealing the fucking show. It was a great way to play off and send those two guys off on their WrestleMania angle. I thought this chamber match was fantastic. And then you get to the main event. And I thought this one was fantastic again. It's not about the moves in the matches. It's about the characters, the story that's told. The moments, the way the crowd can emotionally connect to the talents and the story that they're telling. And they clearly were connected here. I wouldn't say Roman had absolute nuclear heat, but he had a lot of damn heat here. And that's good, because heat is where it's at, not the move set in the middle of your fucking match. And Sammy, obviously the crowd was incredibly behind him. The banter by Roman with... Talking to Sami Zayn's wife, talking about he wanted him in the family. He wanted to provide for them. Like, it's just the type of shit that Roman, in, as the tribal chief, as the head of the table, is uniquely positioned to deliver. His matches just fuck differently. They just hit on a different level. And even the way this played out, you know, the, you got Jimmy Uso runs out, and then you got Jey Uso comes out. And you've got some people thinking, well, it kind of didn't end the way I thought it would. It was kind of disappointing. You know, I get it in this sense of you were kind of booked into this spot with this storyline where you're not going to have Roman lose to Sami Zayn at Elimination Chamber. But this is the po point in time that you've put yourself in because you are just determined to do Cody versus Roman at frickin' Mania. So you had to do something here and you seem to be hard set on having Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens channel the Usos for the tag titles. Maybe that's the main event of night one. It should be. Um, if that's where you're going. So, yeah, Sami wasn't going to win here. I mean, if you wanted to get really interesting on the road to Mania, you could have Cody Rhodes come out and help Sami Zayn win. And now Cody's saying, I got Sami Zayn at fucking WrestleMania. Fuck having to beat Roman Reigns. Like, you know, but... Cody's too insecure to ever actually portray a real heel character anymore. He wants people to like him instead of drawing real money. Um, 
but I didn't think the finish was flat. You know, it was interesting that they went with Jay getting accidentally speared instead of him actually flat out turning on Sammy. But again, that allows you to te tease it out. Be patient with it. And that's okay. Uh, but this worked. And even having KO come out and help him afterwards, it was all good. Like, ended up being a really good show. First two matches sucked. But the last three matches progressed on that level of fuck scale. I enjoyed it. And if this is the type of stuff that we're going to get on the road to WrestleMania, it's going to elicit this type of feeling. I'm going to be a lot more excited about this year's WrestleMania than I have been in some of the previous years. Now, we've still got like six weeks to go, and a lot could change, obviously. Um, but yeah, like you're still going to get some element of the bloodline and Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns involved there. You know, they're going to freaking shoehorn Cody Rhodes in, whatever. Um, but this show was good. Had some good stuff. The crowd was hot for it all night. It made the show a whole hell of a lot better. Um, I wish more of their secondary premium live events were like this one because it would make WWE a lot better to watch on a consistent basis.